God bless you. It is such a blessing to be with you. I am Bishop Thomas Webb, uh, PhD, just recently uh, graduated with that uh, degree uh, earlier uh, last year. And I, um, so excited to uh, have been asked by Archbishop Peterson to uh, share uh, with you and, uh, uh, and all who would like to uh, tune in um, concerning uh, pastoral and ministerial burnout. So I'm really thankful for this opportunity to uh, share as Archbishop uh, Peterson has uh, given us the opportunity. What I want to do um, is uh, share with you out of uh, my hardbound uh, dissertation research. You may not be able to see this, but this is a hardbound dissertation and it is uh, published within the school that God blessed me to graduate from, Amherst, Amherst University, a fully accredited institution um, that is headquartered underneath the Department of Education. So um, it's not a, you know, a fly by night degree. It's a very, very difficult, hard degree to get. Um, but nevertheless, um, I look to teach. I'm currently in the military, but I look to teach uh, prior to uh, retirement in the next several years, whenever the Lord says for me to retire. But nevertheless, I'm honored to uh, come before you tonight. So I'm going to share with you uh, some information as well as some notes that I feel are very pertinent for our walk in Christ as uh, pastors and also as ministers of the gospel. Because guess what? We all suffer burnout. We deal with burnout in many varying degrees where we become now self-reliant on what we know, the knowledge that we gain from someone or some, you know, some reading, some place. Uh, you've watched someone else weather some storms and now you figure, you know, I need to do the same now. So we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, um, in just a moment. But let's start with prayer. Father, bless all these people who are watching, uh, whether it be daytime, evening or night, whatever time of the day, we pray that you will illuminate them and encourage them and bless them in Jesus name. Amen. A little bit more about me, uh, Bishop Thomas Webb, uh, Ph.D. Um, I am a, a professor. I do teach a couple of different universities, uh, fully accredited universities, as well as um, I'm blessed to do some lecturing throughout the country. And um, uh, I love uh, teaching and preaching in the church, but I also get a, a great joy doing so rather lecturing in the classroom, helping to mold and develop minds as they uh, seek to venture out to do some great things in life. And so I am extremely uh, honored and I do uh, thank God for my colleague in ministry as well as an acumen, educational acumen, uh, Dr. Uh, Archbishop Dr. Lorenzo Peterson, again, for this uh, opportunity. So a little bit more about me. Um, I, um, I've served in the military now um, almost uh, 26 years. I'm prior enlisted. And um, so I uh, serve uh, over a wonderful base out here in Texas as the uh, wing chaplain currently. And uh, thank the Lord for that opportunity. But enough of that. A little bit more about me personally. I am a father as well as a grandfather. I'm a, grand, I'm a father of two and a grandfather of two. So I have a son and a daughter and I also have two grandsons. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. One is about to turn uh, two and the other one is just uh, recently turned seven months. And so I'm very, very excited about that. So give God praise for that. But I'm going to again teach you from uh, my dissertation uh, that's entitled Clergy Burnout, an Investigation of Pastors' Experiences During Burnout, a Case Study. But don't just turn off yet. I'm not only going to talk about pastors, but I'm going to also talk about ministers because ministers also become burnt out as well. I've served also in ministry for quite a number of years. Um, I've uh, been preaching the gospel since I was 19. I just turned 51 yesterday, uh, January the 8th, and I give God praise for that. 
but uh, I uh, can definitely tell you it has not always been um, a bed of roses. It has not always been joyful to serve in ministry at any level. Um, and those of you out there, you can identify, you certainly identify with that, say amen with me on that. And so, um, uh, you deal with some opportunities at every level. I once heard a preacher say there's a devil for every level. <laughs> I certainly do believe that. Um, when you deal with a burnout at any level, it is so much. It is too much for a person to handle. It can become overwhelming to a point that you don't know what else to do. You don't know how you're going to handle yourself. You don't know who to turn to. Uh, you may feel like you are a failure. You know, I don't feel like I can do this. This is terrible. Um, this is just too much. I feel overwhelmed, overwhelmed. And I, I just feel like giving up. If any of these words that I just shared, um, and be honest, if, if this speaks to you or if you've said these words or hadn't even said it, if you've even thought these words, I tell you, you are normal. There's nothing wrong with you. We all get there. And uh, I want to encourage you tonight or this morning, whichever time, day or night, this morning, uh, this afternoon, I do want to encourage you uh, that God does see that that you are burned out and he's going to send you help. He's going to give you some tools to help you to cope with it. And also don't be surprised if he leads others to you. But I want to start off this evening by reading a verse of scripture out of the word of God that I certainly believe will um, certainly uh, help you and encourage you in the name of the Lord and I uh, definitely know that God wants us to come to him with our burdens and just certainly know that that he will certainly help you to get through whatever it is that you're dealing with, because he wants you to know that you are not alone. You are not alone. And with that, I want to read out of Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 uh, through 30. Where Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened or heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And that's where I'll stop with that. Um, the Lord wants us to come to him when we are dealing with all kinds of issues as we normally do, but also he wants us to come to him, especially when we need help. Uh, we need a pick me up. We need the Lord to give us some answers. Uh, we're at a, a place of, I just can't do it anymore. This is too much for me. So I'm going to share some things to, with you. Um, and I pray that this is very interesting for you. Um, I certainly know that this is needed throughout the body of Christ. And uh, I want to help you. I want to help you get through what you're going through. Um, and um, I know that God will certainly speak to you and, and give you some signs. And I certainly uh, pray that I serve as an advisor to you in the spirit and that the Lord will certainly bless you real good. So I'm going to quote from um, quite a few um, um, uh, facets of research that I um, did um, researched out of hundreds upon hundreds of books, several hundred books in order to put this dissertation together. Um, everything I could find concerning burnout, whether in ministry, your clergy person, clergy burnout. This is what I want to talk about. And so I was blessed to do a case study, um, which is a research method. Uh, analysis uh, research method and I uh, was able to um, uh, put some things together and interview some people from uh, several different facets of uh, ministry um, from not only a senior pastor but all the way uh, down to a, uh, a children's pastor and some of which were women in ministry so um, uh, you'll certainly be interested to hear that preferably we can get to that today um, but uh, nevertheless, 
a burnout, uh, beloved, it's, it's a stress, stress related theory. Um, it's classified as persistent, harmful mindset that's associated with, with one's work. That's primarily uh, is characterized by tiredness to include stress, uh, less in impetus. Um, you just begin to malfunction. In other words, you start breaking down and uh, you don't necessarily want to um, work with others anymore. Um, in ministry, it is, it's hard to deal with. Um, if you are a person, but clergy uh, uh, deficiency, reduced efficacy, um, and stress have numerous adverse influences on clergy representatives as a whole and churches they lead. And if they do pastor a church or larger populations of people. And so all are vulnerable to experience burnout, um, whether from your personal occupation or perhaps you are a bivocational pastor. Just think about it. So if you're a bivocational pastor, not only do you uh, have to um, uh, lead and be responsible for your ministry uh, at work, but also at home <laughs> and also at your church. So you have a lot that you're balancing. It's a serious balancing act. And certainly one can certainly become burned out. I have been there. I've done that. And as my children were, were really young, um, and literally in diapers, I tell you, it was uh, it was something. And uh, having served in many different aspects of ministry as a children's pastor, as a youth pastor, as an associate, as an assistant pastor, as a senior pastor, even as a bishop, it um, the the stress that you deal with um, in any level of ministry. Uh, whether you're even an evangelist out in the streets, been blessed to do that. Years ago, we were stationed in Mississippi, was able to do that. And you deal with all kinds of stressors and it's not easy. I will tell you that. And you are not abnormal at all. You are certainly normal and there's nothing wrong with you. And so uh, you can deal with uh, lesser uh, concentrations on job contentment. I'm not content with what I do. This is not right. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm burned out. A uh, person's character and behavior begins to take, you know, take a downward spiral. And uh, things don't really start to pan out very well for you. And all of a sudden, you know, you can start stressing out or spazzing out, as some would say, to other church members or staff members. Why? Because you're burned out. You're tired of something. Perhaps there's something that you may not have dealt with at a particular juncture. And you just put that thing aside of course by the leading of the Holy Spirit but uh, this thing continues to wear at you wear at you wear at you to the point that you become burned out and so we all deal with these periods of uh, uh, disappointment and uh, even as I did some research on that most pastors at any level or most ministers at any level are very disappointed in the job that they do um, not that they're disappointed in the job itself but they feel like uh, I may not have the adequate resources to uh, uh, do the job that I've been commissioned to do or asked to do or I just want to serve and doing to be a blessing to my local community or local church and and I want to be at my top optimus. I just want to really be a blessing and do what God wants me to do. But this is so hard. And I'm just I don't know if I have the right tools. I don't know if I'm coming across the right way. Um, and I'm, I'm just I'm just displeased at what I do. And so what happens is uh, we deal with emotional fatigue. Uh, job displeasure, self-blame, inability to meet fiscal and payroll obligations, been there too, y'all. Discouraging critique, church embarrassment if you're going through something, and culpability. And uh, um, there's a lot of research out there on this. And uh, ministers as well as deacons, uh, you name it, any church leader, we deal with burnout. Um, if you are in any level of ministry, even if you are an usher, we all deal with levels of burnout. Sometimes we take it home with us and we don't realize that we may not be as effective a family member as we really should be uh, to your spouse or to your children or to your grandchildren um, or even to your neighbors because you are burned out. You're dealing with something that is just hard for you to let go of. 
and I want to help you uh, in doing so. Just giving you just a little bit of background, and then I'm going to share uh, some examples of myself. Something I really also wanted to point out is uh, we'll also deal with periods where we uh, deal with a lack of motivation uh, to really serve. There's sometimes, I know, I know, I know, if you are at any level of ministry, sometimes you say, I don't want to go to church today. I don't want to go to church this, tonight or whatever time of the week. Bible says, I'm just, I just can't do it. I'm just so burned out. I'm so beat up. I feel like I'm so messed up. Can I call in sick today? I just feel like this is, I'm just overwhelmed. There's just too much. But God wants you to know that you are not by yourself. And he wants to help you uh, with this situation that you're dealing with in terms of burnout. And so burnout is also, it is a disease, a mental one at that, that no one talks about until it's too late, until the person now has committed an act. Uh, unfortunately, there are many, they not only uh, verbalize what they're feeling on the inside, something they've been suppressing for a while, uh, but some unfortunately act it out. Uh, some take malice on others, some act out in inappropriate ways. Uh, it's too late now, and it was not properly dealt with to begin with, and or rather nipped in the bud a long time ago. And um, it, it lessens the motivational vigor that a person has and to complete tasks that they have, you know, more than uh, preaching and teaching or putting a message together. Uh, it's about living a life. It's about loving people and treating people right that you are put in charge of, uh, whether it's a children's ministry, your usher, your musician, uh, your deacon, uh, you're in, in any other ministerial role within the local church setting. You will certainly deal with burnout and um, uh, there's so many different dimensions to it so many different dimensions but uh, three dimensions that I chose to really focus on were emotional fatigue depersonalization and a lack of personal achievement I want to uh, say those one more time emotional fatigue depersonalization and a lack of personal achievement and so specifically you know in this situation a minister of the gospel or pastor you know we suffer uh, from insufficiency again in ministry um, sometimes our emotional health takes a toll and there's a lack of motivation to just really serve in the role that you've been called to serve in and we deal with uh, uh, so much and the Lord wants to encourage you that no matter what your role is, he understands that you are now affected with burnout and he wants to help you in these areas. And so I'm going to uh, speak some from each of these areas. And I want to um, uh, really um, encourage you in the name of the Lord to just know that, again, you are not alone. You are not by yourself. And God is going to certainly help you um, as you grow in the things of God. And so when we deal with emotional fatigue, you deal with not only spiritual fatigue, that's an easy answer. But uh, you you just you, you you you're at a point where you feel powerless. You're at a point you just feel like I don't have the control that I need to walk in peace and not only love, but in graciousness and then uh, some peace and some goodness toward people that you serve with, that you work with in ministry. And uh, and over time, it takes a toll on a person and a person after a while can become very, very bitter. They can become very worn out uh, to a point that they just feel like, you know what, I'm not benevolent toward people anymore. I'm not the giver. I don't, I don't want to do it. I want to be away. I just want to I don't even want to be around y'all no more. Um, and it's not necessarily you, but it's something on the inside of them that they're dealing with. Well, you got to think about it when people say and do things. A lot of times it's not just them. And it's not just the spirit. A lot of things that we're trying to rebuke out of people. It's not always a spirit uh, there. They are mental 
issues that people deal with um, that uh, perhaps even in this sense of burnout it is a mental condition and if we don't effectively treat ourselves and take care of ourselves and take vacations when we need to take them and get away sometimes you need to get away from your local church sometimes you need to get away from a particular ministry in your local church why because if you continue to devote a hundred percent of yourself Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday guess what you will certainly become burned out and the Lord wants you to be at your prime optimus and he wants to use you but there are times you need to get away um, I had a wonderful professor and you all know this this is easy um, he would uh, so often tell us you need to rest you need to take a break from research um, uh, you know he would say God rested <laughs> so you and I need to do some rest as well but there's times beloved we feel um, you know personal restrictions I can't do this I can't do that and I, I'm just I'm powerless I'm dealing with so much bleakness and fear of responsibility that I just I don't I don't want to do this um, it's just so much I, I'm, I, I'm just tired all the time I don't want to eat I don't want to sleep right and you know, I, I, I don't I don't even know if I, I'm called to do this anymore. And uh, I don't know if you've ever been there. I've been there. And there's some times that you will even question your own call. But God wants you to know he has certainly called you. You are human with the spirit of God in you. You get hungry. You may get sad. You may be happy. You're human. You deal with different things in your life. But the Lord wants to encourage you and help you to know that you are not alone and so again we deal with some emotional fatigue in our life and uh, it's not easy when you're dealing with emotional fatigue that just it, it just drives you nuts sometimes you know uh, when people uh, say things to you and do things to you and you don't necessarily expect it or see it coming um, it adds a, a, a depth of stress that you never thought that you can deal with because guess what you are in high demand and people will come to you for advisement 24 7 and uh, they will need you but they're constantly pulling 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 from you but there's sometimes we need to be poured back into and so it's sometimes it's good to get out of your uh, shell at your church whether you usher minister deacon uh, any, any level of uh, ministry in terms of preaching teaching or even pastoral leadership get away from your church get out get out go you need to go and go sit under somebody or rather get away it's, it's nothing wrong with taking a vacation. It's nothing wrong with that, especially in the church. A lot of times we don't want to talk about that. I hate to say this, but even in the black church, we don't we don't talk about this. But we have so many pastors who die on Mondays in the black church than any other day of the week because we take those stressors of the previous week before when we see especially as I just read to you a few minutes ago one of the stressors and and of burnout is inability to meet fiscal obligations many times when you feel like you can't meet your overhead of your local church whether you uh, uh, have acquired a mortgage on a building or you've built your own ministry or you have leased a building and perhaps those offerings are not adding up and you're you're not able to, to make payroll. You become stressed and you're wondering, what do I need to do? Do I need to have more and more revivals? Do I need more people to come? What do I need to do? I'm stressed. I'm burned out. Should I shut this down? What should I do? Uh, I've been there. I mean to tell you, it is not pretty. It's not a good thing. When you lose sleep at night, you're wondering, you know, I have a household to take care of. I have a job. I have a family and also have a church. This is so much to deal with. And it will put some age on you yes it will it'll put some age on you but also it'll also creep into your relationships your personal relationships with your family with your spouse it will affect that especially if you give a good portion if you are definitely a pastor uh, you certainly want to see your ministry grow and do some great things and if you don't watch it and if you don't speak with your 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 husband or with your wife and, and be on the same sheet of music in the spirit and being on or with 
within one accord, it will definitely affect your relationship. I'm telling you from experience, it will affect you and you'll become very burned out. And it may take a while before you uh, come on one accord and one, one or the other may reluctantly agree because they believe in you. They believe in the vision that God has given you and they want to see this thing succeed. And there are others, too. But but perhaps it could be your location. So much could be going on. You don't have adequate parking. You're stressed or there's constant burglary uh, or you are not in, in a really good area. Perhaps maybe your ministry may need to relocate to another part of your city or your town or your state if need be. Well, Lord, what is it that you need me to do? I'm at a point, Lord, I, I, I need your help. I need you, Lord. And, and we deal with this emotional fatigue and uh, it messes with you, especially when we don't exercise as we should. Even in the black church, it's so sad to see so many of us that are out of shape. We don't eat like we should. We don't sleep like we should. We eat foods that are not good for us. Um, I'm not going to tell you what you should eat what you should not eat i mean that's certainly up to you uh, but there are some things we overindulge in and what it does it affects us and sometimes some people they stress eat and uh, to try to cope with the burnout that they're dealing with they stress eat and sometimes it doesn't affect you uh, neurologically so psychologically mentally so and uh, it causes you to have an, an unequal balance even in your own depth of relationships with people. Uh, whereas if you were to eat a little bit more healthier, eating some salads and some things of that nature, exercising a little bit more, you'll feel a lot better about yourself. And the depths of your relationships will heighten it and increase. And people can tell. Um, and then you will feel better about yourself. But I want to go back to something I just shared just a few minutes ago, where we deal we deal in the church. Or I hate to even say the black church. Um, and, and, and you may have a smaller ministry or a ministry where people are not as um, uh, gainfully employed as others in certain other areas. And you may feel like, you know, I, I just, Lord, are you trying to tell me something? I have such a, a, an, an inability to make payroll or uh, things are just bouncing out. What are you saying? Um, perhaps you may need to consult with your uh, regional or local leadership. They can help you with that because this is all part of emotional fatigue. And I certainly believe that the Lord wants to encourage you in that. Don't just give up ministry yet. There may be other alternatives that God has for you. But when you also deal with emotional fatigue, uh, again, I want to go back and, and hit on these vacations and times of relaxation. You need to do that. You got to get away. You have to get away. And there's sometimes you may need to just rest, uh, delegate to another minister or someone on your staff or a cohort in ministry. Can you teach Bible study for me this evening or this morning? Or would you mind preaching for me today? I just need some downtime. I need to rest. And there's nothing wrong with that. You have nothing to be ashamed about. Nothing to be ashamed of at all. And relaxation on most times is often viewed as either therapy for burnout, uh, beloved, or a preemptive measure to counter it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to counter burnout by getting that relaxation, getting those um, uh, times away. Sometimes you need to sit under a spiritual leader or another clergy member who can pour into you when you are dealing with burnout. And so I, I spoke to you about emotional fatigue there, and I, I hope that encouraged you. But I also want to talk about um, one that really sticks out to me. Um, again, is depersonalization, and then we'll follow up and close this out with a lack of personal achievement. But we started out by speaking about emotional fatigue. Now, I want to uh, focus on depersonal Lization, depersonalization. Um, you know, when we as leaders of the gospel um, deal with um, the personalization or compassion fatigue, um, you, you know, or uh, loneliness, you know, that compassion fatigue, you take it with you, especially if you funeralize someone, you're dealing with that. 
um, that pain of um, that loss of a loved one. You, you take this thing home with you. Nurse, often nurses, caring professionals such as yourself and myself, we often do this and without realizing it, the loneliness, the lack of personal achievement and the 24 seven mentality, we all carry these. And within this, we deal with not only emotional exhaustion, but we also deal with depersonalization. And you may say, I've never heard of that word depersonalization before. Um, what is this? It's, it's one of the uh, stages of burnout. In fact, it's the second stage of burnout. That first stage is emotional fatigue, emotional fatigue. Um, and so uh, when we deal with emotional exhaustion, spiritual and mental fatigue, it often causes our own bodies to overproduce, um, as our uh, doctors of medicine call it, overproduce uh, uh, adrenaline. And, you know, as a result of that, the person can then begin to question their ability, their ability to succeed in the work that they're called to do. And so people, they resort to depersonalization. And uh, here's a good example of what that word is. It's a long word. It's called depersonalization. Uh, the person now, they choose to distance themselves mentally and emotionally from others when they feel frustration and fatigue. You're frustrated. You're mad. You're upset. Um, I don't feel like this is working. This is too much. And it's categorized as a detachment from people. Depersonalization. I'm detaching from y'all. I don't, I don't want to be with you guys. I want to disconnect from you. You may not say that, but our actions and our words demonstrate that. And many people don't know what this is. They don't know why they're dealing with what they're dealing with. It's part of burnout. It's called depersonalization. They are burned out. If you can't say that long word, that's all right. It's burnout. You, the correct answer is she's burned out. He's burned out. They take on too much. I see what she does. I see what he does. And th they're dealing with so much. Why don't you help them? You know, for instance, but it's, a, it's characterized as a detachment from others who need help, treatment or training. Um, and they're tired of training people. They're, they're saying the same thing over and over and over and over again. They can say it in their sleep and people still are not getting it. Uh, almost like a teacher. You have to have a lot of patience to be one of those. Um, but it's a cynical uh, answer that, that sometimes they give. They're very uh, almost like smart alecky. Uh, they're very cynical or they're cynic. And uh, people don't want to be around them. Um, they, they snap at you. Um, you know, and they're suffering from those issues or uh, uh, that that um, part of what we call burnout, depersonalization. For, for us that, who serve as pastors, we encounter adverse effects of this when boundaries are not well uh, kept with others who want to infringe in our own personal territory or in, within our own personal lives. And uh, without realizing it, yeah, it's OK to be straightforward and tell some people some things, but you don't want to be nasty toward people. No, you want to be very professional and, 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 and very, you know, conciliatory and, and speak with grace to people. You don't want to uh, uh, speak in with a cynical attitude or, or smart, smart alecky attitude because people will, you know, look at you or rather view you or myself as a very, very negative person. And you don't want to come across that way. But we deal with this as ministers of the gospel. We deal with it, whether you're a minister of the gospel or you're in any part of the clergy band or, or member or leader within the church. Uh, ushers get frustrated. Ushers are tired of getting Given direction. There's, uh, I saw an usher some years ago. She was given direction within a church setting on, on how people should uh, give in the offering and not ball up the money, things of that nature. They're burned out. They get tired. And some people may say, well, he or she was very cynical. Well, they're burned out. That's what's going on. That's what's really going on. So it doesn't matter where you rank as a cleric of the gospel or a clergy member, you deal with it. De depersonal uh, depersonalization is the way, you know, a person creates negative views of others. Uh oh, uh, sometimes we, without realizing it, we can speak about someone in a negative way and not realizing that's what we're doing toward others. And others may perceive you as someone who's very negative. But guess what? You are burned out. 
Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's a minimizing of the humanity of someone else. Uh, what we call judging others. The other person becomes an entity instead of an individual. We are all originals. We are all people. And, uh, you know, people make mistakes. People make errors in judgment. They say and do things that are not within the, the accordance of the, the word of God. And, you know, uh, uh, the Lord doesn't want us to, uh, to judge people, but the Lord wants us, wants us to love them back to life. And so when a pastor or a minister of the gospel loses the desire, you know, for the uh, needed ministry duties of preaching and leading and, and showing care, love and compassion to others. Guess what it indicates? It, it indicates that this uh, clergy member or a leader within the church is waning. Uh, their strength is waning and it's OK. Uh, but you have to recognize what you're dealing with. We all suffer with this and uh, you can continue to give so much, give so much. Well, no one else is on board with me and I'm trying to do this. I got this project and I got a deadline. I have to get this thing done. And I just don't feel like I, I have the support that I need. And if I don't do this thing, it's not going to get done. Well, it may not get done, but God will show you who can come alongside and help you. I guarantee you, if you seek the Lord, God will send someone to help you with that project and to even help to take that load off of your shoulders. Um, I want to share something else with you. You know, when we have a loss of personal achievement, uh, it's the third stage of uh, burnout of clergy burnout that we deal with that we usually encounter and it's based on how the person views their goals that they set out to accomplish, whether they've accomplished these goals or not. Um, I don't feel like I'm adequate. I don't feel like I can do this. And also, also how they interact with people. You know, any one of the clergy um, can experience decreased motivation to perform above and beyond. And we all do. Um, I don't have to give it my all. You know, it's going to be a few people at church today or tonight. Uh, it's going to be a small group. So I really shouldn't give it my all. If it's a larger group, maybe I should give my all. Um, I just don't feel like I'm achieving a whole lot, but we're basing our achievement off of the numbers of people. Um, the Lord um, values what you do more in faithfulness toward that smaller number as opposed to a larger number of people. So please don't be, uh, please um, uh, be encouraged and don't be discouraged by what you see. This is just a season. Uh, this is just a season of time that you're going through and what the Lord is doing, he is proving you. He's proving you as you go through this process and he wants you to be encouraged. This will not last always. And so uh, uh, members of the clergy, you know, we can become not as effective as we once were. And over a process of time, you know, that strength, that increased energy, that motivation that we once had begins to slip. And uh, uh, we, we go into a downward spiral of performance. And so we all deal with these personal struggles uh, coupled with sometimes a lack of support. Uh, from those within your local church or your church assembly or fellowship or your own denomination, perhaps. Uh, maybe they don't see the vision of your local church. Right. I get that. Uh, but when you don't feel like you're adequately supported, whether fiscally, financially or even spiritually, uh, your motivation to continue to achieve and to be the best that you can be will unfortunately uh, uh, topple and, and not uh, work to uh, your benefit. And so, you know, that uh, that low sense of accomplishment, it's a form of burnout that all ministers of the gospel face. We all face it uh, when we feel like we're not accomplishing, you know, um, but, you know, burnout has a, a way of eradicating all the triumphs and successes of clergy members um, to the point that uh, sometimes we're not able to perceive reasons 
to commemorate success. In other words, we're so clouded with burnout that we can't celebrate the good things. It may not be a monumental uh, uh, a thing that has happened in your life, but the Lord wants us to celebrate uh, not only the small successes. Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, the, the, the big successes, but the small ones, too. And uh, so our families can be affected, our communities, our children, your spouses, our spouses can be. But burnout, it negatively affects all those who are close to the clergy member. Remember, I said that just a little while ago. Yeah. Uh, burnout. We take this with us wherever we go. We take us with us wherever you go. You take you with you and, and uh, you don't necessarily change because you are in a new atmosphere. You may have a new lease on life. You may feel different because you are now out of a situation um, and that might be good. Uh, but unless you take some steps to get the proper therapy, some good help, some good advisement that you need, even mental health, something we ne negate to really talk about in the church um, of our Lord Jesus Christ is mental health. Uh, a lot of churches are now dealing with this a lot more because uh, for many years and centuries uh, within the church world, uh, people have perceived that uh, mental conditions are the devil. It's the devil. Oh, it's the devil. No, it's not. everything is not the devil. Uh, much of what we deal with are mental issues. And uh, sometimes it runs within our families uh, from some generations all the way back. Um, and uh, without some proper therapy, without some proper help, some good diagnosis, uh, some steps to recovery. We won't be whole like we need to be. We won't necessarily be at our best to be uh, that good spouse or that good um, family member or that good uh, mother or that good father or that good aunt, uncle, grandfather, grandmother that the Lord wants you to be. And so this burnout that we deal with, it negatively affects all those who are close to us. And uh, without realizing it, we have family members who are walking around hurt. They're walking around in pain and not necessarily understanding fully why. And you may not necessarily understand why, but unless the Lord was to send someone in your life and to really diagnose and see what's going on with you, you won't necessarily understand and they'll perceive you negatively. And unfortunately, if some situations are not dealt with, strife will ensue, uh, resentment will ensue, uh, bitterness will ensue, and uh, things are blown out of proportion and uh, uh, couples and, and families for years can go on without having that resolve that they need all because one member of the family was burned out and it could have been you man of God it could have been you woman of God it could have been you child of God because of what you were dealing with now things have really if you know because they weren't necessarily dealt with and you know and nipped in the bud a long time ago this thing has become so big and insurmountable that now the family is um divided and unless a miracle uh, ensues uh, it may not ever come back together and so burnout is, is very very important and we all get there we all deal with that and the Lord wants to encourage you that even if you are in a marriage you deal with all kinds of stressors um, one in three pastors leave the ministry and pastors rank third among specialists who have been divorced due to marital suffering. And that's um, by Dr. Lewis, 2017. Uh, again, I got to read that again. One in three pastors uh, leave the ministry and pastors rank third among specialists who have been divorced due to marital suffering. And it's all uh, linked back to or rather uh, uh, resulting uh, from burnout. You're dealing with so many stressors. Again, it's a balancing act, as I share it with you. You know, I, I know, I know a lot about this. I've experienced this thing myself. Again, I share it with you all how I've uh, been preaching since 1991. Was blessed to uh, um, pastor my first church after having served as a youth pastor at a church in Mississippi for three years. But in uh, 1999, I started my first church in North Carolina, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, and uh, was there two years and went to Pennsylvania, was there for almost seven years, pastoring my second church there. And I went through so much in both um, states at one point and learning so much about who I was because I was still a much, much younger person then. 
and uh, learning from my mistakes and errors and judgment and uh, uh, going through stress and raising a very, very young family at one point that I allowed uh, myself to become so burned out that I became disinterested in dealing with people. And I remember taking a sabbatical for about six months after um, um, about maybe five years, four or five years at that point. I took a six month sabbatical while I pastored my first church and I just let the church continue to just go on and I brought someone else in to preach and teach for six months. And the church grew and it did well and I came back a, a much more refreshed person. And guess what? God added even a whole lot more people to the church. Why? Because I was a new person. I was a different person than I was at one point. I was Sure, some people left, uh, but some came back and uh, more came back. And the Lord just renewed me and my strength because guess what I needed to do? I needed to put whatever pride I had aside, which I had no problem doing. But I was able to go and sit under another apostolic leader in the city that I was in when I was pastoring in a, a church in Pennsylvania in the early 2000s, mid, mid to late 2000 era. And uh, uh, it was a wonderful experience. I was refreshed. I learned so much. And they sent us back out and we went back out just in power to do the work of the Lord until the Lord moved us a few years after that. But I tell you, I mean, it's nothing wrong with that. Going and sit under your apostolic leader um, and getting some instruction and uh, just being who the Lord wants you to be. You don't have to preach every Sunday to feel validated. No, you don't have to do that um, because what you're doing is you're, you're burning yourself out and the Lord is trying to speak to you through your own situation to tell you, you are burned out, woman of God. You are burned out, man of God. And it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to take a sabbatical and uh, sit under someone if that's something the Lord may lead you to do and to grow for a little while and just rest your heart, rest your mind. You'll sleep better. I'm telling you, you'll eat better. You'll sleep better. You'll feel better about who you are as a person because you, you want to be a good leader of the gospel. You do. You want to be a good minister of the gospel. You don't want to be the kind of minister of the gospel people don't want to be around. No, not at all. You don't want that. You don't want that. Uh, um, but but you want your life to be positively affected um, from all those who you come in contact with. And the Lord wants to use you. I know you're dealing with some emotional fatigue. You're dealing with some depersonalization or some lack of uh, a personal achievement. Those are three main areas of burnout again that I did, and did rather conducted some research. And I, I'm telling you, I learned so much about how we as people within the body of Christ, and I even, I, I hate this term, the black church, but this, in essence, that's who we are. Uh, how many of us, we die too early. There's a verse of scripture in Ecclesiastes that says, why should you die before your time? So many of us are do. So, so many of us are doing that. Uh, we're putting too much on ourselves. We're not we, we don't have a proper diet. We don't have proper exercise and uh, we don't take breaks. It's OK to take a break. You don't have to continue to uh, push yourself. Um, but getting back to a little bit of my own story, I was able to uh, go and pioneer another church apostolically in a state in the South. And the Lord really did some things and the people were really hungry for the, the, the kind of ministry we um, um, were used in that the Holy Spirit used us in at that time. And we saw the church really overflow and we uh, were able to jump on TV and do some TV production, and some other things very quickly within six months. We saw the Lord do some amazing things. But guess what? The more people I had to deal with, the more headaches I had to say, to be honest with you. Some of these kinds of things you really don't want to pray about. You don't want to pray and say, Lord, give me X amount of members. You don't want to pray for that um, because you deal with so much. And if you don't understand how to delegate authority, you know, as a uh, Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, had to tell him, we call it the Jethro principle, uh, if you don't understand how to delegate, you'll feel like you need to do it all. And the Lord doesn't want you to do it all. He wants you to learn to delegate to those who you trust, who serve underneath your leadership. And uh, let the Lord use you and do some great things in, with, and through you. But uh, we saw the Lord do some great things and move in our family. And then not only that, but we also uh, saw the Lord do some great things 
things within our community and our local church. And uh, it was just amazing to see. And I uh, would feel at times like, well, God, I wish this was the ministry we had way up north, some thousand plus miles up north. But uh, I just felt like that was so difficult of a ground to plow and to really get through and do some things. But you got to think when you are in certain areas, some people ex may expect too much of you to the point that um, you, you can't really blossom or achieve like you visualize within your mind because of the expectations others have placed upon you and so uh, perhaps it could be your location you may need to relocate to another city because you may have a spiritual product or a spiritual service that may be a lot more applicable to where you're really looking to get to and perhaps the Holy Spirit and the Lord is really leading you to do that and it could be uh, uh, 20 miles down the road whereas your ministry could be a lot more successful down the road as opposed to where you are but yet you feeling I need to be just anchored here and doing this and doing that to the point that you're burning yourself out and it's okay to take that step of faith it's okay to take that walk of faith woman of God man of God it's okay to do that it's okay to do that and I guarantee you as you channel that energy into uh, that walk of faith and what you know the Lord is telling you to do. Perhaps the Lord is telling you to do radio ministry. Maybe he's telling you to do a form of uh, TV ministry at a low power TV station. Uh, that's something that helped to launch our ministry. We started on TV and we started in one city. We uh, were able to uh, start on radio for a whole uh, several months and then uh, uh, we were able to launch the church from that and uh, we had some revivals going. The church just blossomed from there. Or maybe the Lord may uh, lead you to uh, go to a low power TV station within your city or your town. If you ha if you have that, a lot of the CW stations will allow churches to come in. Just a little tip, um, you know, the you know, they can write that off on their taxes or they'll give you a low fee to, you know, come in and just do some sort of ministry on TV. You never know what God may give you. Be willing to step out of the box, which is one of the things that a lot of ministers and pastors and clergy in general um, are not always willing to do. We're not willing to step out of the box or color outside of the circle or the, the square, whatever it is. We're not willing to step out because sometimes we can confine ourselves to such a degree in one area that we don't necessarily understand that, yeah, the grass is greener. Yeah, it really is. But you got to be willing to get out of that box and try something new. It's OK. It's OK. But I really hope and pray that this is helping you um, as this has certainly helped me. I learned a lot about who I am as a person. Um, but we deal with so much burnout in ministry that we just push, 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 push. And it's not necessarily the Lord who is pushing, 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 pushing us. Uh, we are pushing, pushing us and uh, thinking we are doing God's service. But we're, we're unfortunately tearing our own bodies down. And the Lord doesn't want us to do that. Um, he wants us to be uh, healthy and whole so that we could be uh, well used for his glory. And the Lord wants to do some great things in with and through you if you would let him do that. Um, but um, um, the Lord wants us to learn to develop the ability to recuperate. If you've been in a stage of pastoral burnout or clergy burnout, he wants you to learn to recuperate from it. Take some time. Take some uh, easy steps recognize what caused the, the burnout that you're dealing with. What's caused the anger? What's caused the spaz outs? What's caused the bitterness? What's caused the anger? Instead of allowing the burnout uh, to become just a, uh, a disappointment or a displeasure within ministry, what caused it? What's the root cause of it? Uh, the Lord wants us to respect. Once we learn what caused this, okay, I realize that I took some steps in this area and acknowledge it. There's nothing wrong with that. Or I took some steps over here. I spent too much over there or I delegated too much to these these sort of of, of, of mind, you know, uh, 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 thinkers, the, the, these, these unlike minded thinkers. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say. And it's called some things. And I thought I could really rely on them and I really could not. But you've learned what it is that you're dealing with. And uh, how many of you know that our own congregants expect a lot from us, especially again, once you take those vacations, 
once you take some time away, they'll appreciate you more. They'll miss you. Let them miss you. It's almost like a relationship. Uh, let them miss you. It, it, it causes something to happen uh, within you both. You know, it's a great thing to be missed by your own saints of God in your own local church um, because they're ready to hear that word from you. And you uh, can come back more and more empowered to do some great works within the Lord. And don't always feel like you have to be there every weekend. I once saw a pastor some years ago. He took two weeks vacation. OK, um, everyone expected the pastor to have been gone for two weeks. No Bible study, no church. And wherever he's gone, he's gone. But guess what he did? He came to the church and sat in the back of the church for two whole weeks. And everyone came with their problems after the service and the man couldn't leave. A few years later, the man kept dealing with this and he didn't take a time away like he really needed to. Sure, he would take some revivals and go some places, do some things, you know, but he really didn't take a lot of time away. And he died so young. We died very, very young. And uh, perhaps this person would still be alive. Um, but you take on the burdens of those that you lead um, when you're dealing with compassion fatigue and uh, you're, 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 you're dealing with so much. You're, you're so dealing with some vicarious traumatization where you may have seen something, uh, something um, very grotesque that is really messing your mind up. Uh, so some death or something to that degree. You've seen something take place that has uh, really caused you to become uh, depersonal, uh, depersonalized now uh, where you're beginning to disassociate yourself. You're detaching from people. Um, you know, this thing is messing you up. You've seen something so bad. It's worse than CSI. Uh, but I'm so reminded what the Lord said to us out of the word as we read to you early. He said, come to me. All you who are heavy laden or burdened, I want to give you some rest. The Lord, whatever way he's calling you to come to him, he wants you to come to him. Perhaps the Lord will allow some situations to happen in your life so that you will get the rest. Because he knows that if you were the one to actually decide to go get the rest, you wouldn't do it. And so many times the Lord will place some situations there. And it's not always the devil. The Lord, the Lord will allow some things to happen to show you, man of God, woman of God, you need to rest. And it's OK to do so, because this thing will put some age on you. It will wear you down if you don't understand that we all deal with aspects of burnout. We all deal with it, um, that it will uh, it will affect your own um, uh, mental health, your physical health. It'll cause some issues within your family, especially when you deal with also that emotional fatigue. I got to read this to you. I put in some research on this one. Um, you know, it can be very, very difficult for family members to establish new relationships, sometimes due to frequent relocating. Perhaps you have a job and you're a bivocational leader of some sort and uh, your children a lot of times they forge relationships when they go to different places especially once they uh, get into that teenage year, those teenage years and um, it can be very hard to relocate after you've been there for a couple of years or so but yet you have a mandate from God or you, you, you're with a company that has to move you but just understand that that the geographic relocation, um, it causes a lot of anxiety within a person and sometimes consternation when the pastor or their family or clergy member, they must move, you know, to a new city or a new church or a new parish um, requiring many changes. And so your spouse, they're dealing with a lot of different changes and emotional changes within their minds, their bodies. And uh, sometimes they can uh, deal with depression. Because now I, I don't have the job I used to have because uh, you feel a mandate from God to relocate us now. Or um, I had a, a really good career and now you feel like you need to do this. And so much is going on that not only are you now dealing with some issues, but your whole family is now becoming burned out. You cannot neglect your family. Please don't negate your family. Don't do that. Don't lose yours trying to save theirs. 
That's right. I said that. Let me say that again. Don't lose yours trying to save theirs. So many times we're trying to save everyone else that we're losing ours, especially when we don't uh, get the, uh, the adequate rest that we should. You're dealing with so much chronic stress. Your blood pressure is too high. Your blood sugar is too high. You don't exercise like you should. You don't eat like you should. You're dealing with so many different adverse health consequences. The, the sleep deprivation, the irritability, and increased blood pressure, raised heart rate, inflammation, un, you know, an unwillingness of your immune system to really move like it really needs to move and your appetite is disrupted. Why? Because your soul burned out. Uh, perhaps uh, if you and I were to seek the Lord very early before we make that move, you can eradicate so many problems, um, potential uh, pitfalls of um, ministerial burnout or pastoral burnout. You got to rest so that you can hear from God, uh, man of oh God, woman of oh God. You got to rest. You have to get the rest that you need. And there's times I know you feel like I got to be on call 24 seven. But sometimes you need to delegate to another clergy member or a deacon or a trustee within your church. It's OK to do that. Um, it's OK to do that. You don't have to uh, exhibit um, negative behaviors of uh, ministerial burnout by becoming, you know, insulted at everything, withdrawing from people, which is depersonalization, um, damaging people. Uh, when people don't meet your demands, that's not what we're called to do. Um, that's not showing Christ's love, not at all. And you're dealing with some burnout. And your whole emotional health and well-being is affected in such a way uh, because now you're really not ministerially interested anymore. Um, you're burned out, man. You're burned out, woman. And uh, you have to understand that you've been emotionally fatigued for a while. Your mentality and what you've been called to do, you're not able to analyze and have a good capability of doing so because your mind has just been some of everywhere. The pressures and the frequent strains of um, and your mental capacities have just been limited. It's hard to concentrate and to be attentive to the point that we become inattentive toward those who are trying to help us. But the Lord wants to encourage you and he wants to deliver you from depression. If this is what you're dealing with and workplace stress, he wants to encourage you with that because you're dealing with so much. And you take this thing home with you when you're dealing with compassion fatigue, you take the thing home with you. It's so traumatic what you saw, what you heard, perhaps is welling up some um, past experiences that you've dealt with in your life. And you go home and unfortunately, we inadvertently take these things out on our families, not realizing we are now experiencing burnout. What do you deal with when you're in the middle of the burnout phase? What are you what are you going through? How do you, what, what level are you at? What are you doing to cope uh, with this? Um, are you still able to provide for the needs of your family? Um, not only emotionally or, or fiscally so, but emotionally, also, you know, just being there as a, a good leader in your family. How are you coping with the stress? Are you reading your Bible? Are you exercising? Are you spending time with some mentors? Are you just spending some downtime, just alone time by the water? I love that's something I love to do to get by a stream somewhere or get by the water. I can just uncloud my mind, not even thinking about church, not even thinking about any of those things, just relaxing my body. You know what it does for a person when you can do that. I know there's so much even on our iPhones or your smartphones that you have so many different apps that you can um, use to uh, help you, um, such as you can hear some waterfalls, things of that nature. Just take a nap. Just get some good rest. That's something that the Lord definitely wants you and I to do is to just get some good rest because we deal with so much. We deal with so much. But I pray that this uh, message has encouraged you because uh, I've been there um, um, man of God, a woman of God. I've been there. I've made a lot of mistakes in ministry, uh, made a lot of mistakes 
uh, one serving as a deacon, one serving as a minister, uh, one serving as an associate minister, associate pastor, assistant pastor of a church, and also a pastor of a church, of a few churches, and overseer of some churches. Now, I've made a lot of mistakes in judgment. My judgment has been clouded because I didn't realize that there have been times that I there 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 were times that uh, you know my judgment was clouded or I made a wrong judgment call because I was burned out. I was burned out. I must admit. And uh, as I researched and researched and researched, just hundreds and hundreds of hours of research and just putting this together, I have uh, learned a lot that uh, a lot of us in ministry, we don't realize this is something we deal with. And many people, as according to George Barner now, some 20, I believe it's now 25, 24, 25 years ago in his book, um, there are many books, but I remember one book he published some years ago, and I believe I have it on the shelf behind me somewhere over here, entitled uh, Sur Surprising Insights of the Unchurched. Surprising Insights of the Unchurched. Um, I also heard him at a, a pastor seminar back then in the early 2000s era. He uh, shared how so many pastors have become so discouraged with ministry that they, that they quit and they go do something else. Now, does that negate the call on your life? No, it does not. You're still called, but it's okay to uh, take a sabbatical, but don't stay there. Don't stay there because God has other aspects that he wants you to tap into, not necessarily where you are. It may be uh, time for you to relocate. Uh, one thing I will say about some mainline denominations, they will relocate pastors. Um, when they sense that uh, uh, she or he is dealing with uh, some stresses and some uh, stressors or strains of their own personal life or ministry, they'll relocate them after a number of a couple of years. I know in particular the AME church will do that. They will relocate you or if something dire has come up, they will relocate you. Um, not just sit you down and you're not doing anything, but, but to keep you uh, not only gainfully employed, but to keep you, your mind interested and continue to be vested. But sometimes if you indicate, you know, to your uh, Episcopal leadership, your presiding elder, to your bishop uh, with the name of church, look, I need to step back. I need to just serve as an associate minister or associate pastor, whatever uh, the um, hierarchy is in that you, the church or denomination. They'll listen to you and uh, they will help you and, and give you the resources that you need. Now, not every denomination is able to do this. Not every church is able to do this. And again, not everything is a devil. Everything is not a devil. The only thing that people are dealing with, they're dealing with different levels of burnout. And uh, they, it needs to be classified as that. When you begin to ask the questions, you peel the onion back. You will later learn what she or he is dealing with. They're dealing with some pain. Um, they're dealing with lack of personal achievement. They're dealing with some areas of the, the personalization where they're detaching themselves. They're um, um, saying some things that, uh, that you never thought they would say. Uh, they're um, uh, just lashing out at you. Something's going on. They're taking on too much and uh, they feel like they don't have help or they're dealing with some emotional exhaustion. They're exhausted. I mean, really, they're just almost like a walking zombie. I'm just here. And you may even notice doing praise and worship. They may not participate as much. Uh, something is going on there. Um, and it could be for other various reasons they might not. But but uh, when you know your leader, as you pray for your leader, the Lord will show you what she or he is dealing with. And it's always good to be there for your leadership and to love them back to life. Love them to where God wants them to be because we all deal with it. We all deal with burnout. And if we don't get that proper downtime away from the pulpit or away from the church or uh, just relax yourself, revitalize your, yourself, recharge your batteries, um, you know, do something fun, play a game, play a sport. If you're a runner, like I once was a long, long, long time ago, or, or do something uh, a little bit more constructive, some art, 
or some music, play an instrument, sing. Um, nothing ministry related, like I'm in the pulpit preaching. Yeah, it could be God, you know, of course, but, but something that relaxes your mind. You have to understand that as a ministerial leader, we all encounter adverse effects of uh, burnout, especially when our boundaries, again, are, um, have been breached by others who just insist on coming to us all the time, all the time, all the time, that, w that we're not realizing that uh, we can burn someone else out and they love you so much, they'll be there for you, but at the same time, they're dying on the inside, but they won't tell you, or they're not necessarily understanding what is going on, but they wanna help you, but they're not necessarily always helping themselves. And so again, don't lose yourself trying to save others. Um, sometimes you may need to teach people how to depend on the Lord. Um, we're, we can't be everything to everybody. We're not, we're, 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 we're not Jesus. We're not Jesus, y'all. We're not Jesus. We can't solve every problem. We can't solve every issue. After a while, if we don't watch it, people will become very codependent on us and not understanding how they need to hear the Holy Spirit for themselves. It's okay for them to come to us, but they need to first go to God. Um, I, I tell them at church, if the Lord has already spoken, you don't come to me because I may tell you something that might not be in accordance with what the Lord has already told you. And that could happen. That's actually happened sometimes. And I've had to stop them like, wait a minute, what is the Lord saying to you? Because if he's already given you that direction, uh, don't allow them to come to you because you may say something um, that may definitely it, it might not be in accordance to what the Lord is saying. And after a while, people will, um, you know, because you're, you're human, they may say some things that may hurt you and uh, discourage you to a point that I don't know why I'm going through this again. Um, I thought I'm giving my all to them and this family, this couple, these people, and and uh, I'm, I'm just trying to love. I'm just trying to do right. But you're dealing with so much. And so the Lord wants to encourage you. And I pray that this short lesson on uh, pastoral and ministerial burnout has uh, spoken to you, that it has encouraged you, and that the Lord has uh, deposited some nuggets within you. And so uh, thank you again for allowing me to share my research with you. I pray that you were blessed. If you want to find it, it's um, in the ProQuest, ProQuest database um, for dissertations. Um, and I guess if you go to um, Google Scholar, you can pull it up as well. Google Scholar will pull it up. You go to Google and type Google Scholar. You can type my dissertation title. Um, it's entitled Clergy Burnout. An Investigation of Pastor's Experiences During Burnout, a Case Study. So I pray that this has uh, added some value to your life, that the Lord has spoken to you and that he has encouraged you. And thank you so much, Fellowship, as well as Archbishop Lorenzo Peterson, sir. Thank you so much for allowing me this opportunity to share with our good people. And so uh, with this, um, let's pray. And then we will move forward. Lord, thank you for these precious people uh, who have tuned in. And we just pray that uh, they've heard something uh, that has strengthened them, that has spoken to them, that uh, will encourage them to recognize uh, the signs of burnout these signs of burnout uh, that they may act out or feel or notice within others. Help them, Lord, to be revitalized. Help them to take the steps that are necessary to move forward in their lives and in their ministries so that they can be uh, better for the people that they lead, whether they are a children's pastor, a usher, a trustee, or just a regular uh, church goer or a minister of the gospel, a singer, or a pastor of some sort, associate minister, associate pastor, assistant pastor, overseer, bishop, presiding elder, presiding bishop, Lord, whatever these titles that many of us emanate in or serve in or that we carry, Lord, help us to understand first that we are people, that we need you. 
And Lord, help us to understand that we deal with emotional exhaustion. We deal with frustration. We deal with depersonalization. We deal with lack of personal achievement to a point that sometimes we just want to give up. But Lord, raise different ones up to encourage us to speak to our spirits, to speak to our hearts, to help us to understand and help us to grow and to be the best that you called us to be. Well, believer, I pray that God has spoken to you and that uh, he has uh, given you some good nuggets. And we pray that this uh, uh, time of uh, teaching has uh, spoken to you. So um, within the next couple of weeks, as the Lord speaks, and as rather as he as well allows us to, we're going to be a little bit more interactive. And so. I'm not able to be with you in person this evening, but uh, we will uh, a couple evenings, a couple of weeks from now on Monday evening coming up. And uh, I want to uh, just share with you some more and interact with you and uh, help answer some of your questions, because some of you have already been writing me and calling me and texting me and uh, um, prayerfully we're able to help you. So on the 23rd, around the same time of January 2023, we're going to meet again, but we will be interactive. And so I want to talk to you. I want you to talk back to me and uh, we're going to work this thing through and uh, see what the Lord does. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you. God bless you. I am now signing off. This is Bishop Thomas Webb. And uh, we pray that the Lord will continue to strengthen and use you as you recognize the signs of burnout that can emanate and arise in your life. God bless you.